uh, start our meeting and we'll turn to the hymn 430. 430, all the way my Saviour leads me. Welcome each and every one that has already gathered in and we welcome all that's on Facebook, YouTube and Sermon Audio. Uh, we welcome you all tonight. So we're going to start off and we'll stand when we hear the music for 430, all the way my Saviour leads me. Thank you, that was good singing. We'll now uh, bring our meeting to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, that we're here tonight, Lord God, to learn more about thee. We're here tonight, Lord God, to praise and to worship thee. We thank you, Lord God, when we're thine, that thou, our God, leads us all the way. We thank you for thy direction. We thank you, Lord God, for thy help and mercy upon each and every one of us. And Lord God, the very presence, Lord God, that thou has been in our midst already tonight, Lord God, downstairs with the boys and girls. And Lord God, we just thank you, Lord God, that thou, our God, has already, Lord God, uh, been taking them home in safety. We pray that each and every one, Lord God, boys and girls, will be taken home in safety tonight. Lord God, we just come afresh and we thank you for our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord God, for the one that made it all possible that each and every believer is gathered out tonight because, Lord God, in total obedience to thee, our God, the Son of God went all the way to Calvary and Lord God, we thank and praise thee, Lord God, that he did it all for us. Lord God, even before we were even born, Lord God, the Saviour had completed salvation upon the cross work at Calvary. And Lord God, we thank and praise thee, it's a finished work. We thank and praise thee, Lord God, that when the Saviour was put in the tomb, his body was in the tomb, Lord God, we thank you on the third day he rose again, triumphant over the grave 
And Lord God, we just thank you, Lord God, that one day he's coming again. Lord God, one day he's going to leave the Father's side where he's right now making intercession for us. And he's coming back, Lord God, to gather his saints in. And Lord God, we just pray, Lord God, that even before that, that others would be gathered in. Even before that, Lord God, that thou would speak to others, the boys and girls that heard the word of God tonight, the need of salvation, the need of the Christ of the cross. Lord God, for others that weekly, and Lord God, here in our own church from the pulpit, their need of salvation. And Lord God, we thank and praise thee, Lord God, that in this church is preached, Lord God, that the blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin. And Lord God, we just pray indeed that thou would drive that fact home to those still outside of Christ. And Lord God, tonight we pray for those in need. And Lord God, there's so many of thy own people in need tonight. And Lord God, we pray thy hand would be upon them. We pray, Lord God, for the Furley family. We pray for William. We pray, Lord God, for uh, the daughters and the sons. We pray, Lord God, for Barbara. We pray for Heather. We pray for Joanne. We pray for Stephen and David and their families. And Lord God, comfort them in these days. Give them strength in the days that lie ahead. But Lord God, we thank and praise thee. Lord God, that our sister Jean is in the glory. And Lord God, that is the most important of all. And Lord God, we pray too for the Reverend Martin's family. We pray, Lord God, for his uncle's family. And Lord God, that thou would be with them. And even at that funeral service, Lord God, may the word of God go forth. May, Lord God, those, Lord God, even related, Lord, to his uncle, may they find the Saviour. So, Lord God, we just pray too for those that are unwell at this time. We pray, Lord God, for Bobby Moore. Touch him in hospital. Lord God, be with him, we pray. Be on, tell him what he needs. We pray, Lord God, for uh, at this time, Lord God, our brother, Lord God, uh, uh, oh, uh, Lord God, uh, you know who I was uh, in mind that goes through that procedure on Friday. Lord God, that thou would draw near him. Cyril, that thou would draw near him and touch him. Make it possible he'll get that procedure. So, Lord God, we leave all this with thee. And, Lord God, that thou would bless and help. And, Lord God, guide. Help me tonight. Take away the nerves. Lord God, you see how the old devil would try to block the mind already. But, Lord God, we lean fully upon thee, our God. So we ask all this in our Saviour's name. Amen. Amen. We'll turn again to another hymn, uh, 204. Let us sing of his love once again. 204. Let us sing of his love once again.
thank you. That was very good singing. And for those just in, a warm welcome to you all. And again, to those that have tuned in, in Facebook, Sermon Audio, and YouTube, uh, you're very welcome. Thank you, Margaret. We turn to a, a portion of scripture tonight found in Psalm 24, the verses 1 to 10. Psalm 24, the verses 1 to 10. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Selah. And we know God will bless the reading of his precious word. We'll ask God to bless. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, Lord God, that thou is the King of glory. And Lord God, we look to thee tonight for help. Lord God, that thou, our God, would bring everything to mind that thou hast led before me. And Lord God, we pray you'll take away the fear of man, you'll take away the nerves from me. And Lord God, that I will speak as thus and thus saith the Lord. And Lord God, that you'll lay out the challenge. And Lord God, that each and every one will take it in till our hearts. And Lord God, walk in obedience to our God. Lord God, we give thee the thanks now and ask thee in the Saviour's name, help us, dear God. Amen. Tonight, I want to encourage each other in a simple look at verses of Scripture from the Word of God. They are a very straightforward instruction and indeed an encouragement. An encouragement that believers should follow on a daily practice in their walk with God. Encouragement that will help and guide each and every one of us as the word of God does. As we endeavour to strive for those clean hands and the pure heart. Referred already by the psalmist David when he asked the question, in that verse 3 of the Psalm 24, which we read, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? And there was an answer. The answer is one that should encourage, should challenge the soul of you and I, the blood-bought child of God. Verse 4, He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. And when you and I strive for those clean hands and that pure heart while on this earth, while we walk close to God as we ought, we see in verse 5 of the same psalm how we will be rewarded for our obedience and faithfulness. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Firstly, we look at the word of God. The word of God. After all, the other instructions and encouragement we will look at tonight, 
They come from God's word. And that is how we are fed in, and learned. That is how we grow from the word of God, from the teaching of God. We're able, therefore, to draw closer to the Lord by reading and putting into practice his precious word. John 8 and the verse 31, and we'll turn to John 8 because we could be staying in John 8 at times. John 8 and the verse 31 with this first point. John 8 and 31 says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue, continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. It is good to remind us ourselves from the very beginning the importance it is for the child of God to daily read and study the word of God. I have never read from a Bible commentator, heard from a faithful minister of God or a teacher that ever we were instructed or advised us that we should read a whole portion of scripture, a massive portion at a time. No, it is important that you read a portion of scripture that you are comfortable and capable of taking it into your mind, capable of understanding it and remembering it, capable at that time of gaining instruction and a blessing from it. I don't believe that it is beneficial to just read a large chapter at a time just so that you say you can, that you did it. You need to read and digest it. Be able to remember a short time later what you did read. So often I had been guilty in the past Closed the Bible, yes, read it. But maybe I didn't remember it. But I learned that you have to study the Bible. The end result most times, if you read too much at a time, is that shortly after closing the Bible, you remember nothing of what you just read. You have gained no instruction you have achieved no blessing whatsoever for that day ahead. Yes, take time and read the portion, the word of God, over a number of times. And you will find that God will leave a thought with you. It may be encouragement. It may be advice. It may be rebuke. It may be a command. But if you read the word of God carefully... And prayerfully, each time you will come away from the word of God with a word. You will gain wisdom. You will gain knowledge. And your mind and thoughts will be provoked and simulated by the word of God that you have just read. My experience is that after reading and meditating on God's word, there's a desire left with you. The desire is that you can't wait till the next time you bring down the word of God. The next time to read and learn more and more. You gain a greater desire, therefore, to walk practically and spiritually closer with God. Practically should be a great word in the believer's vocabulary. To walk practically with the word of God for God. William uh, Lyon Phillips, a born again believer and one of the top lecturers at Yale University from 1901 to his retirement in 1933. He was a professor of English literature. Said this regarding the reading of God's word. I thoroughly believe in a university education for both men and women. But I believe a knowledge of the Bible without a college education 
is more valuable than a college education without the Bible. And General MacArthur told an American Bible Society visitor, Never a day in my life goes by, but be I ever so tired, but I always read my Bible. Yes, it is very important to read the Word of God. And as the verse 8 in that chapter in John states, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. A character of a good disciple, the character of a faithful servant of God, is one that heeds the word of God, one who puts it into practice as they walk daily with the Lord. As you and I pursue after those clean hands that we read in the psalm, note the commandment from the verse 8 in John. Continue in my word. Simple instruction for you and I in this first point. Continue to read the precious word of God and obey it. Secondly, the love of God. The love of God. John 15 and the verse 9. John 15 and the verse 9. John 15 and the verse 9. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. What encouraging words from our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He, he knew that he was soon, when he uttered these words, he was soon to be crucified. He was speaking and encouraging and giving words of instructions to his disciples. Surely you and I, brother and sister, should be encouraged to strive to walk closer to God, realizing and taking into our hearts what love, what abounding love the Father had for you and I, that he gave his only begotten Son the Lord Jesus Christ, to die in your place and mine. In this same chapter, we read the Lord's command regarding love, which he gave to his disciples, and for his redeemed, which is you and I. This is my command, verse 12, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Brother and sister in Christ, we are endeavouring tonight to see how we can get a closer walk with God. Going all out as we read to strive for those clean hands and a pure heart. Now note therefore this command that ye love one another as I loved you. How do we get the closer walk? How do we get the blessing from God? By ha also having a love for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Not quick to see each other's faults and weaknesses, but to encourage one another and love one another in the Lord. It's a command. Not my words. It's a command. Strive to have complete harmony in the church where God has led each of us to worship and serve him, then I believe all the hindrances will fade away and the blessing from the Lord will come like never before into the congregation and into the church, that you love one another as I have loved you. Yes, God has blessed us here as a church from small beginnings, God has blessed us with wonderful blessings, with mighty answers to prayer in the past, in the present. But we must make sure that we be in accord together, in unity. Then, then, what mighty blessings we will further achieve. We can take encouragement from a very short verse of Scripture found in Hebrews chapter 13 and the verse 1, very small. Let brotherly love 
continue, continue. The apostle here, who many commentators believe that the pen man of Hebrews was indeed Paul, was inspired by God. He's instructing the Hebrews that special and spiritual affection ought to exist among the children of God. Brothers and sisters, God's love was so great for you and I that he sacrificed his only son, the Lord Jesus, in our place. And then why, as his children, can we not fully love one another as God loved us, as God in his word commands us? He commands us. A faithful, encouraging servant of the Lord many years ago pointed out this next verse to me, and I never forgot it. He's found in this room tonight to you see. First Peter chapter 3 and the verse 8. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion on one of another. Love as brethren. Be pitiful. Be courteous. Believer, does this verse need any clarification? No. But it does require action. It does require for you and I to put it into practice in our daily walk with God. I'm a great one that God put in my mind many, many times to put the word of God into practice. One way one thing to hear it, but it's another to be a doer of it. Going back to John 15 and the verse 9, note again that command contained, continue ye in my love. Before I move to our next point, turn to John uh, in the same chapter 15 and the verse 13. Observing what the Lord Jesus describes you and I as. Look. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. His friends. I want us to stop for a moment and take it in. Je the Lord Jesus died in your place and my mine. When you and I accepted Christ into our hearts as Saviour, as the verse states, surely that makes us his friends. That a man laid down his life for his friends. Therefore it makes us all who are saved and walking with the Lord Jesus Christ all friends, all brothers and sisters connected to each other through who, through our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Does that, that then encourage us, without exception, to love one another? We're commanded. Love one another as commanded by the love of God. Continue ye in my love. And in verse 17, these things I command you, that ye love one another. Another. Have you seen the connection thus far? Thus far from the two points in John chapter 8 and 31 and John 15 and verse 9. Have you seen the word that connects them? Have you seen the command from God? Continue. Continue. Oh, you don't stop because you've done it all. You don't stop. Servant of God goes on. The devil doesn't stop. He doesn't stop. He'll come at you. So you must continue and put into practice the word of God and in the love of God. Thirdly, our faith in God. Our faith in God. Turn to Acts 14. And the verse 22, our faith in God. Acts 14 and the verse 22. 
confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Our faith in God. Our third point is our faith in God. What I want us to look at here is our faith in God. To have faith and belief that God answers prayers and God will see us through is of the utmost importance to the believer in Christ. But on this occasion, this is not what I want to deal with tonight. I want to, in a simple way, explain in order that we can grasp and understand what Paul is saying, what he is exhorting to the disciples and the believers whom he and Barnabas returned to at Antioch. They returned to encourage. The emphasis made by Paul is that the believer must continue in the faith and must follow through with God. Why did Paul need to return and do this? Why did they need to come back? Well, simply, earlier in the uh, earlier part of Acts chapter 14, certain Jews had turned against Paul and the followers of Christ. Why? For preaching the gospel. Just not to them, but also to the Gentiles. Paul was stoned. He was left for dead. And eventually, along with Barnabas, he got out of Antioch. He continued to preach the gospel in other places. The believers who remained were now under persecution for their faith and belief in God. Despite previous persecution and bodily injury, now Paul returns. And we read in verse 22, Paul exhorting them to continue in the faith. He has went back. Despite maybe the possibility of death, he went back to encourage the people, the believers of God. Paul urges them. He advises them. He encourages them with all earnestness to remain strong and faithful to God. Remember, Due to the persecution being dished out by these certain Jews, many followers of Christ had departed from the faith. Pure and simple, they had gone. They were backslidden. Now Paul and Barnabas were concerned for their remaining fellow brethren. Paul continued to encourage the saints that remained and he persuaded them with these words, and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Is that not applying to us in these days? When I was looking at this again, is this not applying to this to us in these days? There's a watering down in fear of getting cut off, in fear of being embarrassed by the tongue. And sometimes we're guilty of letting the fear of man take over. And we clam up. We clam up. And yes, some believers have been driven because of attacks against them. In workplace, in school, especially the young who need our encouragement to backslide. But you see what Paul is doing? He's encouraging the saints to strive on continually. Continually to seek those clean hands and a pure heart. To get closer to the safety of God. To get through the trials. To get through the tribulation and persecution. And you know what the end result is? The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God heaven's glory this situation that Paul was dealing with dear brother and sister it's the same plight we the believer 
are finding ourselves in today. The believer must not, and it's so easy, we must not settle in a comfort zone. It happens. We need to be out of our comfort zone in these days. We need to be with the minister, with the shepherds of the flock at the forefront. We do not need to bluff ourselves into thinking that persecution of the Christian is not happening today in our land. Yes, we mightn't be persecuted the way some people have been put to death, some people languishing in prisons, churches underground. But there's a persecution going on. We need, brother and sister, to be awake to the fact that it is happening right here in Ulster. Forget about the United Kingdom. It's ongoing there. But right under our noses. Yes, make no mistake, there is a constant attack, constant hostility on the remaining faithful churches of Christ, even by the apostate churches upon us. Most who were once strong in the faith themselves, but the wavered, the compromised, the compromised. Who else is attacking us? The government, the authorities, politicians, our local politicians. They are given support to all the cults, to all the so-called ism, religions, false religions. All that are going on. Replacing God's commandments with evil legislation. Going against the true believing church of God. Yes, attempting to do away with every commandment and law of God. Dear people, there was a time I didn't worry. A time I didn't worry. A way back, and usually recall it, we didn't have that worry. But we should be worried now. We should be driven on to pray to God's intervention, to pray to get closer to God. We are under attack, dear people, under attack. Temptation to the Christian to compromise in their daily walk with God has never been as strong as it is today. Remember, the devil is subtle. When I was growing up and used, it would have people here, People going on the Sabbath morning to their church walked openly with the Bible. Walked open with the Bible to church. We no longer see that much going along the streets. We don't often see that as much. The Bible's tucked in. We must stand up for God. We must be awake. The Sabbath day has steadily been eroded out of sight. The preaching of the gospel outdoors, being opposed at every opportunity. New legislation being brought into force against genuine, I say genuine street preachers, preaching the faithful gospel in Belfast. And once in, this evil law wants to bring it in the back door. It'll spread throughout Ulster. That's why we need all the support. That's why God's people need to be out in the open air, at the open air that goes on from May through to August here in Cumber. That's why we as God's people must at all cost, yes, at all cost, stand and witness in the open air. I am not against this following practice by any means. I'm not against whatsoever that I'm about to highlight. In fact, I have been involved in their distribution. I have no problem. But you, did you ever stop to think? To get Protestant people in our own land to accept a simple gospel track, the front page has to be illustrated in such a manner that the receiver is believing that they are receiving information involving the event that they are attending. Otherwise, it doesn't even rest in their hand. It's thrown down. No time for God. 
No room for the Christ of the cross. Scarved day, the 12th of July. It's like confetti on the streets. Confetti on the streets. I could continue, but have you grasped the message that if this is not prose- per- uh, persecution today, then tell me, what is it? Remember God warned us, his own believing people, of everything we have just covered in this point. First Peter in 5, 8, well known to us. But do we take it in? Do we, does it alarm us? Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Believer, note the command we have read in Acts 14, verse 22, and exhorting them to continue in the faith. This applies, this is a challenge to you and I. In this day in which we live, I encourage each and every one of us tonight, in order to protect our faith in God, continue strongly in the faith. Listen and put into practice what Paul told the remaining believers who were under persecution to be strong in their faith and belief in God. Be unshakable. Brother and sister, do you grasp now the importance for the need to strive for what the psalmist David encourages us who are God's children to continue to do in order to receive the kingdom of heaven? Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. I am finishing with an important command, which will is the main power to all we have covered tonight from the word of God. Again, the apostle Paul was inspired by God to give this command to the Colossians. Colossians 4 and the verse 2. Continue in prayer. And watch in the same with thanksgiving. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this command is self-explainable, so direct that I am not making this command into a point. Simply I plead with you, put it into practice in your walk with God, striving for those clean hands and pure heart, striving to be strong in the Lord, to stand up for the Lord. Continue in prayer and watching the same with thanksgiving. Yes, the connection of our verses and points are complete. Continue in my word. Continue in my love. Continue in the faith. Continue in prayer. In closing, I share with you the words recorded by an old English Protestant Puritan. Continuance is the test of reality. If the Saviour's won your heart, and for heaven you've made a start, keep your eyes upon the chart and continue on. Buy the truth and sell it not. Hold for God the bit you've got. Be content whatever your lot and continue on. Feed on Christ the living bread. Drink on him the fountain head. Think of why his blood was shed and continue on. Continue on, brothers and sisters, with Christ. Continue on with the love of God. Continue on in the faith and continue on in prayer. We now thank our, our listeners and viewers on Sermon Audio and on uh, YouTube and Facebook Thank you for uh, turning in tonight and God bless.